Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. This is the Morning Market Review. My name is Russell Shaw. I'm a Senior Market Specialist at FXM, and my email address is at fxm.com. Again, I would encourage if you want to correspond, that is the email address to use. Um, Today is Thursday, it's the 19th of October. I'm just going to go ahead and bring up our disclaimers and we shall start off with a high risk investment warning. I'll keep this on screen for a few moments. Good morning, Kim. Raj, pleasure to have you on the webinar as always. Thank you very much for signing in. Let's just go ahead and bring up our market commentaries disclaimer. I'll keep that on screen for a few moments as well. Hey, James, good morning to you. Okay, and finally, just the references Markoscope 2.0 and TradingView.com. Let's go through to tradingview.com. We usually start off with the real rate. I think it's worth looking at it at the beginning again. And we saw that the real rate was moving higher. That's what we saw yesterday. Now, one of the difficulties that we said yesterday is that Although the real rate is moving higher, there seems to have been some sort of disconnect between the real rate and the dollar. And the dollar did play catch up yesterday. It did, it did catch up to some extent. So let's just take a look at that. Hey, Andrew, good morning to you. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead, just bring up the US dollar underneath us. Okay, um, what we said was that there could be a one, two, one, two, two, three. I'm going to just make this a solid line. Two, three, make this one solid. And then uh, potentially moving into the next one, two. Um, I think as long as that real rate remains elevated, uh, this remains a distinct possibility. So the correlation coefficient we said yesterday is still is strong. It's not lockstep, it's not one for one. So there can be discrepancies, but generally the overall correlation coefficient is positive. It looks like it's uh, catching up. Um, we want to keep an eye on this. Let's just take a look at the US dollar uh, in more detail and for that we're going to use market scope so just bear with me while I bring uh, market scope up um, just a recap of the broader trend um, it, it looks up it's got that higher trough higher peak um, it's only um, well, it's not only, it's Thursday, you can see how there is um, a support tail or a buying tail on this week's candle. And of course, uh, we remain above that 30 week exponential moving average. That exponential moving average is pointing up. The direction of the moving averages um, I put quite a big emphasis on as an extra filter. So the direction of the EMAs, I think, is important. And the fact that we are moving up with the 30-week EMA is telling here. And of course, the RSI is above 50. And if we take a look at the daily chart, yesterday we were in zone two. We were in zone two. It's pushed back into zone one. Okay, so there's that catch up that we suggested may happen. Well, it happened. Okay, so, um, the US dollar pushing into zone one. Take a look at the RSR uh, pulling away from 50 and above 50. So uh, there does seem to be some sort of positivity. Yesterday's candle, I would say, is a decent sized candle in terms of the real body. So 
Um, the real yields still being very much a key driver in terms of greenback direction. Now, let's go down to the hourly chart and see if there's any support levels here for us to keep an eye on. So we go down to the hourly chart. Let me just clean this up. All right, so here, here's a ca catch up yesterday. Here's the green EMA crossing above the orange EMA. Here's the stochastic pushing positive. And then here's where the stochastic hits that upper quintile and holds. Okay, so there, there's the catch up that we were sp speaking about. Um, I think this, the chart makeup here to me uh, actually more complic complicated today than yesterday because uh, we've run into this R1 resistance. Um, so I think there's uh, two, two ways to look at this. The first way is to keep an eye on the stochastic. If it stays in that upper quintile above 80, then the momentum remains up, and I think we break that R1. However, you can see that the stochastic has crossed down, and I just wonder uh, if we get a pullback through to the central pivot, and if the central pivot acts as the support level, and then we get the movement up. In other words, in other words, the proverbial dip in the uptrend. So um, I think yesterday was perhaps a little bit more sensical in that we were playing catch up with the real rate. Now um, it really is a function of the momentum. Does the momentum hold or uh, does it fold? And uh, if it folds, then the I think there's a fair amount of support at the central pivot. Okay, um, slightly different direction to take things this morning. I want to take a look at Netflix. I want to take a look at Tesla. They came um, in with results overnight. Tesla uh, disappointed. Uh, in fact, there's been a dial back of expectations there. Um, Netflix has had the, uh, I think, the biggest subscriber growth ever, um, subject to correction, I think. So I just want to do a top-down analysis of those two. Um, so let's just bring up Tesla first. Okay, um, what we can do, let's just bring up Tesla on a monthly scale. All right, now what we have here is the um, five month, the green five month exponential moving average is above the orange. 10 month exponential moving average that is that does put the EMAs into a bullish formation however okay what we've got to acknowledge here is that the angle and separation of the EMAs has flattened out considerably and uh, that's suggestive of a um, you know a, a loss of momentum on the longer term chart. You can see the reason that we've flattened out on the EMAs is because we've had four months of really, you know, average candlesticks. Um, the uh, fact is that um, there is um, almost a um, an exhaustion here. Now, what Tesla has been doing is they've been lowering the price of their vehicles to boost sales, to fight competition, to battle the um, economy. And um, whilst the volume may pick up, it could compress margins. And that's effectively what's happened. Their, their gross margins have come down below threshold levels. So we want to keep an eye on the, uh, on the EMAs here because they flattened out. And if they cross down, gee, that's not a good sign for the company, is it? All right. And then 
if you take a look at the RSI, yes, the monthly RSI is above 50, but it's really flat. Um, and I, I'm just worry. I just worry that we're going to see a, a bearish cross here. Just worry we see a bearish cross here. Um, what's interesting um, is the so so we okay. Let me just stop there, and we'll just say yes, we are in primary uptrend, but that uptrend is losing momentum. Okay, let's go to the weekly chart. So we dial down one time frame. And you can see the loss of momentum is actually a, um, a symmetrical triangle. It's like a, a, it's what we call a coil. And what happens with a coil? It, it's like a spring. You, you you compress the spring, and then eventually it reaches the apex of the of the coil, and it jumps out. And it's either going to break up or break down. If it doesn't break up or break down, and it hits that apex and goes over the apex, then it evolves into another. It evolves into another um, pattern, so possibly going into some sort of rectangle or, or you know, uh, double top. Or, but the point is, uh, look how it's starting to break down out of that lower, out of that lower triangle. And I think we're going to have, I think, okay, again, subject to correction. It really depends on the market sentiment. But I think because the um, earnings uh, came out, I think they came out after the market closed. Yesterday evening, I think we're going to see pressure on Tesla today, and uh, I think we get um, an extension down here. Um, Russ just say, just saying that that 30-week uh, exponential moving average starting to flatten, and uh, look, that's the next key lo key support level for me is um, does it drop below that 30-week exponential moving average, and if it does. Does the 30-week exponential moving average curl over and start pointing down? That's another negative. That's another negative for Tesla, right? And then, of course, the um, RSI here again, just not um, not really uh, robust. What it is, it's over 50. We'll have to acknowledge that. But it's very close to 50. Uh, 50 is the neutral area, and I just worry if we're getting a breakdown in the symmetrical triangle. And if uh, the 30-week uh, exponential moving average is fragile, I think that the RSI dips below that 50. And I think then uh, we do have perhaps um, the market reaction to the dialback in Tesla expectations. Remember, Tesla really was the ultimate growth stock uh, at, at one stage. At one stage, it had a PE ratio. Uh, again, I'm just trying to remember um, and I hope I'm correct but I think it was over 400 I mean if you disappoint if you have a PE ratio that high and you disappoint on your results gee you're going to get hammered okay so we just got to watch this very carefully um, the next way that we can look at Tesla is just to take a look at the daily chart and uh, what's happening on the daily chart is it's, it's kind of a map of um, the travels that Tesla is starting to undertake and it's dropped from zone two into zone three so it's already showing signs of cracking here and um, the uh, the red Bollingers are starting to squeeze so if the red Bollingers are starting to squeeze uh, it, general Bollinger theory says when there's a squeeze it's the proverbial calm before the storm so we're probably looking for an expansion expansion in volatility and if that expansion is to the downside well look at the uh, RSIs it's already on the negative side of 50 isn't it so um, again uh, nothing's uh, a guarantee in this business but it does seem that there is some headwinds now facing Tesla and I think it might come under pressure today so just be aware of that um, I'll take a look at it again when the market opens um, but uh, it was really at one stage the growth darling and it's starting to disappoint it's not keeping up with the market expectations let's just go ahead do the same analysis with um, Netflix so I'm just going to bring Netflix in here uh, just bear with me
Okay, let's uh, bring Netflix up. Uh, just bear with me, it's just downloading the uh, price action. Now remember, the uh, Netflix results were a lot more positive uh, with the... Um, yeah, what does it tell us about prospects for the economy? So, I think, James, that um, the... I think that... I'm not sure what we can infer about the economy. What we can infer about, I think, Tesla is that it is uh, certainly facing increased competition from uh, BYD in, in China, um, Rivian. Um, all these are showing um, um, strong competition. And, and uh, the fact that uh, perhaps the you have to lower prices in this is perhaps a reflection that the economy is not as strong as um, you know as we would like. So uh, perhaps uh, that's what it's suggesting. All right, let's take a look at Netflix. Very interesting as well. Now remember, it had it had really good uh, um, subscriber growth, but the price is under pressure here, and um, I just think that this needs to be watched very carefully. We've got this potential crossover on Netflix and we've got a um, we've got a potential uh, um, bearish cross of the RSR I think it's important for us to keep an eye on Netflix to see if the results act as some sort of support um, the fact that Netflix is starting to roll over remember um, it's part of the FANG stocks, okay? It's um, a key driver of the market. Uh, the fact that the su subscriber growth uh, came out so strong, let's see if it does lead to some sort of support because then potentially that falters through to um, the broader market. If we take a look at the weekly chart here, um, you can see that uh, it does have this lower peak, lower trough. Take a look at the exponential moving average. The candlesticks are below. The candlesticks are below um, that 30-week exponential moving average, and the 30-week exponential moving average is pointing down. There's that filter that I that I like looking at. It's pointing down. Take a look at the um, RSI. It's below 50. So there's still some bearish pressure on Netflix. Okay, uh, the market clearly not comfortable with the company does the results that it's released overnight change that okay the way that we can monitor that is on the daily chart go through to the daily chart and you can see that uh, it's in zone three if it moves from zone three to zone two there's that relative strength coming forward so i'm going to watch netflix today as well i want to see if it pushes from zone three into zone two, and if it can push from zone two into zone one. Um, it's not a good looking chart. Uh, the technicals on Netflix and the technicals on Tesla both look challenging to me. And um, what we got to acknowledge, uh, let me just see there's a, maybe the economy shows a slowdown on Netflix. Um, I think, by and large, where are we actually seeing uh, the headwinds, James? Yes, we're seeing the headwinds in, in Tesla. Yes, we're seeing the headwinds in Netflix. Where I think we're really seeing the headwinds is in the broader markets. So if you go through to, say, uh, SP500, okay, and we bring up the SP500, uh, where I think the um, headwinds are being reflected, James, is in the trend and the trend's determined by peaks and troughs, and you've got the lower peak, the lower trough here. Take a look at the 30-week exponential moving average, absolutely flat, okay? So we want to see if we can um, hold a support and break above this downsloping trend line. But at the moment, uh, S&P 500 not sitting too comfortably, 
is it? It's sitting uh, quite uncomfortably, in fact. Let's take a look at NASDAQ 100. So just go through to NAS 100, which is the, uh, the growth side of the market. And again, uh, we can put in the peak here. I'm just going to put P for peak. And we could put in the trough here. Okay. And then here's your lower peak. Okay. Here's your lower trough. Right. Okay. But it looks like we can potentially be getting another lower peak here. I'll put a question mark because it's not quite charted yet. But if we get another lower peak, uh, that's negative. Okay. Um, at least the price is above the, or the candlesticks are above the three-week moving average, and at least the three-week moving average is pointing up. But that lower peak, lower trough, uh, I think is a reflection, James, of the difficulty that these companies are facing. So um, I think that's mostly where uh, we see it. Uh, we'll need to keep track of this. Uh, Ras just saying the Middle East issues weighing strong on equities. Um, I would I would agree with that. So typically, um, I don't think um, that we were looking. I don't think the market was looking very good before the conflict broke out. I think it was under pressure, but I think it looked as if perhaps it could be improving. I think that Middle East conflict has added a, 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 an extra headwind, and I think that is certainly what's being reflected here. One way for us to uh, monitor uh, the, the Middle East conflict um, in terms, in, in financial terms, okay, is to take a look at um, oil. If the oil price um, continues to move higher, okay, if the oil price continues to move higher, I would suggest that's probably the most di uh, directly influenced instrument from the Middle East, but that's inflationary, okay? Well, if that's inflationary, it's going to be reflected in the yields. Well, if it's reflected in the yields, it's going to act on the risk market. So everything's interconnected here. Everything is interconnected. Um, Raj, asking if it's risk off today. Let's just go through to DAX. Let's see if we can uh, get a feel for what's happening because the DAX is open five minutes back. Uh, let's just go through to the daily. Mm, we're in zone three here. I think we're in zone three here, Raj. Um, I think that we could have a potentially risk off moment. Uh, let's just take a look at um, US dollar. Um, okay, US dollar coming back somewhat. I think I think it's going to be a challenging day. Uh, again, you know, uh, I'm not a crystal ball, so I'm going to tap on my my, my favorite phrase, subject to correction. Um, but I think that uh, if we get a pull back to the central pivot, we may have some slight risk on. But I think once we get to that central pivot, uh, you know, there could be a change of sentiment because uh, it's that dip in the uptrend. Uh, let's just take a look at DAX. Uh, DAX starting off risk on, starting off risk on. But I would suggest just be very cognizant of the fact that because we are in zone three, the resistance here is going to be quite powerful. So once we get to central pivot R1, if you're long, just be careful tighten up the stops there. If you want to go short, just look for crossovers there. All right. Um, any questions, guys? Any questions? Please go ahead and type those through. All right. Let's wrap up here. Uh, have a great day. Have a great evening. And we shall uh, chat again tomorrow morning. Thanks very much, guys. Cheers.